So the way that we have got to this video happening is a series of events that I need to explain. So a couple months ago, one of my patrons made a bingo board for me full of kind of like some of my reading goals that I should hit off. And I did a reading vlog playing bingo on that, on that board that the patron made for me. I made a reading vlog where I tried to get bingo on that board. Then after that video, some of my patrons got chatting. I was like, oh my God, we should do a patron readathon on bingo and thus bingathon was born which let me tell you is one of the craziest things i've ever seen in my time on this earth it is a readathon that my patrons have created themselves some of my patrons came up with the reading prompts my mods did a lot of the work with the bingo boards and the theming and the spreadsheets oh my god guys the tracking spreadsheets we'll get into it in a second are absolutely insane <laughs> absolutely insane so today I'm going to be playing Bingathon along with my patrons. Yeah, I guess let's go play Bingathon. The Readathon that my patrons have created is absolutely insane. Let's go play it and hopefully have some fun reading some fun stuff this week. But before we get into the reading of this video, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor, which is Serious Readers. This is my serious light. I have the high definition light. And you guys know I'm obsessed with it. It's generally my favorite thing in the world. I use it every single day. I use it every single day. A day where I do not use my serious light is a day I have not read because anytime I'm reading, <laughs> I'm using my serious light. I love it so much. I love it so much. So this is basically a reading light that is fitted with something called daylight wavelength technology. So the light that comes from this is so natural on the eye. It replicates the daylight spectrum. So the light we get from the sun and in the day as closely as possible. So it feels super natural in the eyes. I generally, when I'm reading this, I don't, I almost don't notice it. I just notice that I'm reading better, that I'm getting less eye strain, that I'm reading more. It feels so natural on the eye that reading with it is just a breeze. Oh my God, I love it so much. It makes me so excited to read. Generally, I think if you're to invest in any reading accessory, this bad boy is it. I love it. It has a movable head and an adjustable dimmer so you can really adjust the level of the light to what works best for you. I love it. So I have a code which is MWB24 which will get you a hundred pounds off your high definition light. It's a crazy, crazy discount. A hundred pounds off a high definition light and free UK delivery. They can deliver internationally and they can fit it with your plug. So if you need a US plug, an EU plug, they can fit that. But if you're in the UK, it will also get you free UK delivery. I love my serious light. I cannot recommend it to you guys enough. It is one of the best investments, best reading investments I have ever made. So if you're intrigued, go check out my link down below. They've got other models as well, but my link does get you hundred pounds off the high definition one, which is what I have. I love it. I love it. It's the best. It's one of my greatest possessions. So go check out the link down below. Quite a lot of you have got these through me promoting them. So I'd love to know also in the comments if you have it, if you enjoy it, what you like using it for. It's also good, I think, for things like knitting. I see people use it for any kind of crafting. The light is great for that. It's absolutely amazing, guys. So go check out the link down below and let's get into the rest of the video. So it's time to find out what I'm going to be reading. <laughs> so nervous. So how I decided to do Bingathon was I was going to read the books I was going to read in June anyways, because this is a month long readathon that my patrons are hosting. So I was reading the books I was reading for other videos in June. What I'm going to go do now is go through and assign them prompts. However, the way I'm playing Bingathon is I'm only allowing one prompt per book. So, you know, we can't like double up on prompts. <laughs> We're going one prompt per book. And also I'm going to go through in the order that I read the books this month and assign them their prompts one by one. So no takes these back seats. So there'll probably be some books that like I give three prompts to choose between, but then there's another book later on that there's only one prompt to fit. So I've already fulfilled that prompt. There's no takes these back seats. So that's the way we're playing it. And we'll see, <laughs> we'll see how we do. You're going to play a game. Girl, play it right. <laughs> I'm so nervous. I've been trying all month to like, you know, be engaged with what everyone's doing and everyone hitting bingo and everyone playing it, but also not really think about the prompts because I haven't wanted to thought, think about if the books I'm reading are fulfilling any prompts or if they're filling lots of prompts. I don't know. They've also made like 10,000, not 10,000, they've made, <laughs> they've made individual bingo boards for every letter of the alphabet. So the first thing we're gonna do is generate a random letter. That's what we're gonna do. D, <laughs> we're at number D. And then they've made this amazing personal tracker. There's so many spreadsheets, guys. There's, look at all these stats. We've got so many, this is all done by my mods and my patrons. All the, the reading prompts are generated by my patrons. Look at this, this is crazy. Don't ask about this. I may have to be reading that. <laughs> you can't ignore the verdict. What verdict? 
See, this is me ignoring the verdict. I just think this is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, yeah, we've made this personal bingo tracker. Oh my God, I feel so nervous. Right, I need to get my reading spreadsheet up so I can see what books I've read this month because I couldn't tell ya. <laughs> I couldn't tell ya. Okie dokie. And we want bingo board D. We're not gonna look at that until we've done this. Okay, this is now, we're gonna input the books and it will show us on the tracker what prompts we fulfilled and then we can go from there. So the first book that I read this month was Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley. Will this fulfill any prompt? I don't know. <laughs> Um, how many pages is it? Hang on. You're like in the way of my reading spreadsheet. <laughs> Was it over 500? Oh, 488. That's so annoying. <laughs> okay, I am gonna go with... <laughs> I don't know what prompt I'm assigning this to. This is the no takes these backsies is really upsetting me. I could do it for the average rating higher than 3.5, but will I want to use something else on that? Okay, okay, okay. It's a 4.33. We're gonna do that. Average rating rate higher than a 3.5. Okay. Okay, next was Butter by Asako Yuzuki. Okay, this could be book you didn't buy. I was gifted it. I think maybe let's go with one word title for this one because I don't think we'll probably get a lot of other one word titles. So I think let's, let's use that up on that one. Next is How to Solve Your Own Murder. I think for this one, I remember when we had the prompt um, favorite genre, I was gonna condense that even closer to a murder mystery. So because this was a murder mystery, I feel like we should go with that one. Then we've got Throwback. Oh, we've got another one word title by Maureen Goo. Oh, what do we wanna go for this one? <laughs> we could go book without the in the title. We could go, um, Scooby Doo Bidoo. <laughs> Genre you wouldn't normally read, no, 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 no. Okay, I think we'll go book without that in the title. I don't know why we're going for that one, but we are. Oh, then we've got the last word. Oh, but this is my first five star of the month. So let's give this five star. Okay, let's do that. The first five star of the month was five star. Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. See, am I allowed to do author you've previously given five stars because it's Shauna Maguire. Even though I haven't read a Mira Grant book before, it's a pen name. So I'm gonna allow it. <laughs> but I think that's fine, right? Author you've previously given five stars. It's Shauna Maguire. The same, the words have been typed by the same hands, you know, just because it's a pen name. So we'll do that one. And then we've got My Dark Vanessa. And since this was a wrapped up retro, let's go with TBR Veteran. Okay, that's the books I've read so far this month. <laughs> that's... I'm scared we're either gonna have bingo or like be so far away from bingo. Let's look at the bingo sheet. <laughs> we're one book away. <laughs> It's all going according to plan. <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, I could try and get like double bingo. We could do these three prompts. Maybe, what do we think about that? Because I, I have told everyone I will read unhinged. So maybe let's do that. So we're gonna, we're gonna get double bingo. We're gonna get two lines is the aim of the game. So we're gonna read a guilty pleasure. We're gonna continue a series and the most recent, what is the most recent addition to my TBR? It's gonna be something I unboxed recently. What one was it? <laughs> we're gonna think after, I think I know what it is. So let's go select what we wanna read for these three, shall we? Oh my gosh, okay. If you watched my most recent uh, vlog, Wrapped Up Retro, I hauled these three books on the same day. I opened these on the same day. So we've got uh, A Talent for Murder by Peter Swanson, we have got The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins, and we have got Out There Screaming, which is a horror anthology edited by jo Jordan Peele. Technically I could read any of these, but I did unbox this one last, and it came after them. Like I opened those, and then I like stopped filming and then 20 seconds later this arrived at my door. So I think we have to read Out There Screaming by Jordan Peele. I'm not gonna lie, I was not 
anticipating reading this <laughs> this quickly. I'm excited. We've got N.K. Jemison. We've got Rebecca Roanhorse. What other Nnedi Okorafor I've read from before? Any others? Any other authors I've read from before? Peach Jelly Clark. Okay, I'm really, really excited for this one. I have had mixed things, but what I'm going to do probably is rate each story individually, which will be fun, and we'll see what the average rating is. Guilty pleasure. <laughs> I promised them I would read Unhinged, which is a door smut. <laughs> Everyone's read it. You guys saw it was like the most read book. Everyone's read this in Bingo Thon because it fulfills a lot of prompts like uh, guilty pleasure, one one word cover. So I feel like I have to read it. So we're gonna read Unhinged. It's like very short. It's like 60 pages or something. And then what was the last prompt? Continuous series. What series do I want to continue most? Oh, if I'm honest with you, I probably, the series I most want to make progress in is probably Mislaid and Parts Half Nine. I've just been wanting to read this since it came out. I've been wanting to read it since it came out and I've haven't been able to fit it into any vlog yet. And I just, I don't like waiting this long to read away with children books. So that's what we're gonna be reading to hit bingo. We have got Out There Screaming, Miss Layden, Parts Half Known, and Unhinged. <laughs> I'll probably start, we probably wanna read, leave this last cause that hits bingo on both ends. We probably wanna read this last. I'll start with Out There Screaming and then we'll have a little break in the middle with Unhinged. I'll check in with you once I've read a few of these short stories and what I'm thinking, but I haven't read an anthology in a while. So, and also I think I could have gone ages without starting this otherwise. So I'm glad that this has forced me to pick it up. And we're gonna be, we're gonna be making, we're gonna be updating a series and seeing what everyone has been experiencing with Unhinged. What's the average rating for Unhinged? So 15 people have read Unhinged and it's got an average rating of 2.33. <laughs> Anyways, we shall see. We shall see <laughs> how it goes. Hello beautiful people. Good morning. I just went in my mum and dad's room because it's so hot. We're in a British heat wave <laughs> and I love the heat, but outside. I love being outside, but alas, I must do things inside. And um, my mom and dad had their room redone recently and they, hang on, it's a bit, a bit tight and it's a bit close up. Um, but then you can see my bare knee. <laughs> if a Victorian ever saw this video. The behavior that you exhibited was whore-like. The whore jumped out. They had their room redone and my mom hates the heat. So they have aircon, which is unheard of in the British population <laughs> in their room. So I just went and lay down in there to like cool down before I filmed. And then I've come back in here and I'm like, that was a mistake because now I feel even not. <laughs> Anyways, I have started uh, out there screaming. I'm actually halfway through. Actually, I need to inform you, this was sent to me if, in my last vlog. I opened this and there was no note. It was sent to me by the Discord Miss Elf, which is someone <laughs> from my patron Discord who sends gifts to people and we don't know who they are. It's a bit of a mystery. We don't know who the Discord Miss Elf is and they they left a comment on an old burner YouTube account. Hello friend if you're out there, thank you so much, but who are you? <laughs> it's driving us all insane. Actually, we don't want to know. The magic is amazing. It's incredible that someone from the Discord is just secretly sending books to people. But uh, this was sent to me by the Discord Miss Elf. I was going to check, check in with you about a third of the way through, but I didn't have a ton to say, but now I do. So the thing with this is I really enjoyed the start of it and my enjoyment is sinking a little bit. Let me actually tell you what individual ratings I've given each because that will kind of determine what my rating is at the end. So Reckless Eyeballing by N.K. Jemison, I gave a four. Iron Tooth by Rebecca Roanhorse, I gave a four. Wandering Devil by Caldwell Turnbull, I gave a three. My favourite so far was Invasion of the Baby Snatchers by Leslie Naneka um, Arum... Sorry, it's too hot. <laughs> My mouth is stopping. Aruma. Um, it was a 4.5. The other one by Violet Allen was a 2. La Sirene by Erin E. Adams was a 3. The Rider by Tanana Reeve Jew was a 4. The, oh, the Aesthetic? The uh, Aesthetic? Uh, uh, <laughs> the As... The... Uh, Aesthet? The Aesthet by Justin C. Key was a 1. I didn't like that one. We'll talk about it in a sec. Pressure by Ezra Clayton Daniels was a two and Dark Home by Nidhi a four. I'd probably give a 2.75. The reason that I think my enjoyment is going down is these will have a very similar brief. So at the be beginning there's a foreword by Jordan Peele talking about how, and I haven't seen Get Out, but the brief that he gave was how in Get Out, I don't know if this is a spoiler for Get Out, I don't think so. Anyways, it's been out a long time. Um, the character goes to their sunken place, which is like, their worst nightmares come to fruition or something. And be, having such a specific uh, prompt, I think has made the author, all these 
books have a very similar format or a very similar story arc where like a character realizes thinks oh we're fine and then has a realization that is horrible and suddenly life as we know it is incredibly altered is basically like vaguely the story arc that they all go on and I think it's just getting a bit repetitive there's not a lot there's variety in story but there's not a ton of variety in story arc and that that's just making them all feel a little bit repetitive for me so my least favorite one I did not have a scoob what was fucking happening there was like a character who was a piece of art but like a person and like we were getting told things about this piece of art doing things and like rights of the piece of art and I just could not I like I'm like is this a do you look like a person or are you a fucking painting walking around like I can't I didn't understand what it meant by a piece of art I just think it got a little bit ambitious you know and I love ambition in books but I feel like this one was like calm your tits babes like it was a bit it, it, was, it wasn't achieving what it was setting out to achieve I couldn't picture anything that was happening whereas my favorite the invasion of baby snatchers is one where it was like sci-fi like alien babies or like aliens impregnating humans with like alien babies and I really enjoyed that one the only reason it wasn't a five and this is like minor minor spoilers for it but like there was a character who turned up the end that played a big role in the ending of that one that I don't remember being in any of the rest of the story like they were just referred to by name <laughs> they just set up and the main character was like oh yeah like I'll say a fake name Dawn <laughs> Ruth don't know why it's an old woman's name but like Ruth turned up and did this and I'm like I'm flicking through the rest of the story trying to find Ruth I don't know if I can who was Ruth <laughs> maybe she was there somewhere but I didn't I couldn't find her early in the story who is she who is she where did you find her so I'm yeah I'm enjoying it I think you know there's some great writers in here some that I've read from before and some that I haven't I'm enjoying backwards some writing or being introduced to new ones but it's just feeling like by the brief and by them writing for Jordan Peele, they're all a bit samey. They're all a bit similar. And I just don't, I think crafting an anthology is a real talent. And not everyone has that talent and that's okay. This isn't a read. <laughs> this isn't a read to Jordan Peele. But like, it's not easy. It's not like, oh yeah, I'll just get all these authors to write these books for me. Like you need to craft, you need to be able to craft a piece like a like you know it's like it needs to be a cohesive work as a as a once read through thing so anyways that's my thoughts I'm gonna try and finish it tonight I've got the audiobook and what's fun is there is a different audiobook narrator for each short story which I'm enjoying and I'm recognizing some of them I think some of them have uh, audiobook narrated some of those authors previous works that I've read so anyways I'm gonna go finish it but we need to go let's change up our location and talk about something exciting right it's so bright I don't know if you can see me I'm trying to get over my fear of filming outside in the garden because people can hear me but I think we're okay so this is what I've got to show you <laughs> we have quite a few parcels <laughs> You guys have been so kind and you know, knowing that these past couple weeks have been very difficult personally, this camera's crooked. <laughs> I hate filming out here, I get so anxious. Please don't let us in. Um, yeah, you guys have been amazing and some of you have sent me some more books. <laughs> and I'm just so overwhelmed, I'm so thankful. You guys are so kind. I'm trying, the past couple of days I've been trying to like, I don't know, I, I don't really want to bring it into the videos, but it's always stuff to do with Aurora basically and her still not being great but I've been trying to I don't know not live in fear every day of her dying basically um and just like look after her and just try and get on with stuff a little bit more than I have been so but this is just so kind I had a few arrive and I thought we'd open them all together I'm a little bit overwhelmed book number one we have got <gasps> no way is this from Melissa it's from Melissa <laughs> Melissa is one of my mods, one of my oldest patrons. Oldest has in, been there the longest. Um, I'm sorry you've been going through it lately. I hope things get easier for you soon, Meg. Thank you so much, Melissa. This is a book. I said this is Melissa because Melissa loves this author and just read this book and it is Private Rights by Julia Armfeld. I'm so excited for this one. I know it's about three sisters whose father dies. He was an architect and they want to like... I don't know, then shit starts going wrong. Julia Armfield wrote Our Wives Under the Sea, so she writes very much quiet horror, from my understanding, like quiet, I don't know, spooky, eerie, you know, horror. And I think this made Melissa cry a lot, so I'm super looking forward to this one. <gasps> Thank you so much, Melissa. This one's super duper exciting. It literally just came out. Oh my gosh, Melissa. I knew it was you straight away. 
thank you so much next one <laughs> this one was accidentally opened by my family let's see who these are from i'm not looking at what they are oh heidi 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 thank you heidi says you share so much i want to share with you my favorite agatha christie from your wish list my favorite cat book to add to your next book about cats work <gasps> my all-time favorite book okay 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 so the agatha christie one is halloween party by agatha christie spooky ooky kooky and creepy so i'm not a big book collector but if there's something I collect, it's these editions of Agatha Christie. I absolutely love them. I absolutely am obsessed with them. I want to get them all. <laughs> I think they're so beautiful. And I love them all together. I love the foiling on them. So this one, I think, is the one that's just been made into the film. But they've changed, like, into A Haunting in Venice, which just came out. But they've changed quite a bit of it, which is very interesting. But it is a Poirot. So thank you so much, Heidi. I love these editions so much. And then this one, I don't think, was on my wish list. The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. Oh, this is the author of Once Upon a River. Oh, interesting. A riveting multi-layered mystery that twists and turns and weaves a quite magical spell. That sounds so... I love anything that combines mystery and fantasy, which sounds like what this is. So thank you so much, Heidi. Abandoned House, Two Parallel Stories, and A Secret That Will Change in Everything. <gasps> How exciting. <laughs> How exciting. Okay, next one, next one, next one. One of Us Knows by Alyssa Cole. Who is this from? The Discord Riddler. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay. So, they just mentioned you to Discord Elf. Okay, and in that comment, they, they said what the note had said. And I, we also had the Discord Riddler. <laughs> Another person's any books. Or we thought there was. But then the note, the comment that the Discord Elf left had a riddle in it. So I was like, oh, they must be the same person. The Discord Riddler has taken it upon themselves to let me know that they are not the same person. <laughs> it's all the drama, Mick. I just love it. Oh my God, no way. So we've got one of us knows, which is the new release. That is a call. Um, it's about this woman who goes to look after this house, a new caretaker for a historical estate, finds herself trapped on an island with a murderer and ghosts of her past. I'm super excited for this one, but I cannot get over the fact. The disc I have to tell the Discord immediately. Bye, I have to run and tell them. <laughs> too much we were all like oh my god the discord elf and the discord i said they're the same person they are not the same person this is this is momentous news holy shit well thank you discord riddler clue one are there more clues reach out make a burner account on instagram and just give me some give me some info <laughs> <laughs> got one more this is from Heidi so Heidi's message I assumed my favorite cat book and my all-time favorite book were the same thing no this is Heidi's all-time favorite book this is Heidi's favorite cat book <laughs> Heidi I'm in a complete state of shock I forgot what I was gonna say that cover love saves the day Prudence is a sassy but sensitive feline heroine <laughs> <laughs> holy shit what is this <laughs> it's a story of hope healing how the love of a cat can make all, all of us better humans oh my gosh i can't read this right now because i will cry i will cry but thank you so much heidi my goodness it's a novel for anyone who's ever wondered what their cat was really thinking well i just can't get over the news i need to go talk to my discord immediately this is crazy. Anyways, thank you everyone so much for all the books. I appreciate it so much. I'm so excited to read all of them. I am now gonna bring my book out here and finish. Well, I'm gonna try and read as much as I can about their screaming. I'll either finish it tonight or in the morning. And I'll check in with you when I have. Oh my God, I need to go share this momentous news. <sighs> okay, hello. I don't have a lot more to say about Out There Screaming by Jordan Pill. I actually wanna find out what my rating is because 
Um, I want to get it as an average of all of my ratings of the short stories. So let me just run you through quickly what I gave them. Flicker I gave 4.25. The Most Strongest Obia Woman of the World I gave 1. The Norwood Trouble I gave 2.5. A Grief of the Dead I gave 3.5. A Bird Sings by the Etching Tree I gave 4. An American Fable I gave 3. But I'm sitting here like, what was that? <laughs> I literally just read it and I can't remember them. Your Happy Place I gave 4. Hide and Seek I gave... I'm going to change that to a 3. And origin story I gave two. I just, you know, I don't think this is bad, obviously. Oh wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. We gotta do the average rating. <laughs> so my average rating comes out to almost exactly a three. <laughs> 3.03 .03. so yeah I don't think this is bad I think there's some really good short stories in here it was just a bit hit and miss and like I said I didn't feel as much that they were repetitive in the second half but I also didn't feel like there were many that like shook me that were like oh my god that's so different you know there were some that I feel like could have benefited from being longer there were some that I think could have benefited from being shorter so it's a bit of a tale of a mix of emotions really my highest was a 4.5 right I gave a 4.5 and I gave a 4.25 and everything else was kind of middling yeah those two ones were my highest I thought they had really strong concepts they had very vivid concepts they were also more sci-fi-y some of the more sci-fi ones I didn't like some of the more like historical based ones I didn't think they were as interesting but I mean it was fine <laughs> Meh. Mm. so let's log this on my personal tracker on bingathon I haven't submitted everything to the big bingathon spreadsheet which we will do at the end um, at the moment I'm just filling in my personal tracker spreadsheet okie dokie there we go so I'm going to read guilty pleasure next which is unhinged I don't really know a lot about it I just know everyone's been reading it <laughs> <laughs> for the readathon. I'm nervous. I don't know if it's my kind of thing. It's only 70 pages though. So I've got the ebook on my phone and we shall, we shall read it. Maybe I'll film my whole time reading it to see what I think. <laughs> I'm nervous. What are they putting me through? And the average rating is like a two. Let's, we'll, we'll go see. <laughs> I feel comfortable reading this in front of a camera. What the fuck is this shit? What the fuck? I don't know what I just read. <laughs> this is what trauma looks like. I is this zoomed in? Back up, back up. You're in my personal space. Um, <sighs> I, don't I don't know. I don't know how to talk about what I just read. I don't know what I just read. I don't know how I feel about what I've just read. I don't know how my soul feels about what I've just read. Okay, now here's the thing. So unhinged, it's door smut. So like spoiler. Spoiler alert, she fucks the door. <laughs> Jesus fix it. Fix it right now, Lord. Right. Firstly, it's not very well written. Um, I'm going to give it two stars. Here's a controversial take, which, you know, normally well, all my patrons have bloody read this book. God knows. I think it could have committed to the bit more. And that may be controversial. Listen, it's 70 pages, if that. It's more like 60 pages. And um, there's like, I think, four sex scenes within that time. Two human, two door. <laughs> but I think it got a bit repetitive. When you saw me reading, that was the first one uh, about the midway mark. So like, they're all condensed in like 30 pages at the end. I think it could have committed to the bit more. And I know this sounds insane. Like, you already think, God, what must she be thinking to think of this concept? <laughs> I think we could have done more. I think we could have done more. Yup, 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 yup. All she did was one thing. I think if you're gonna do this, if you're gonna write a door smart book, be imaginative. Like I think 
wood varnish. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I feel like we could have gone further. I just think, I just don't think it was, I don't know. It was weird for like the sake of being weird. And I almost think, hmm, I don't know. It wasn't very well written. It was, it was not well written, but you know, at least I can die knowing I have read a door smug book. I think there's certain things in life you should experience once <laughs> before you die. <laughs> Maybe this is one of them, you know? I always say I want to have flown upper class at least once in my life before. I don't want to die having not experienced how the bougie half, li half live. Maybe this is another thing that I should experience before I die. <laughs> I just didn't know it. It wasn't great. It wasn't great, but it fulfilled the guilty... It wasn't even a guilty pleasure though. But it's fulfilling that prompt because I feel like it's everyone's been everyone's guilty pleasure during, during Bingathon. I don't really have anything to say to you. Like, it's just, it's not good. Like, the bad guy is so bad. Again. But here's the thing. This is like a whole area of romance that I, I am not in and I am probably never going to be in. Like, these weird little romance Kindle Unlimited novellas. I'm never going to be a Kindle Unlimited romance girly. If I'm reading romance, it's it's traditionally published. And it's like, you know, it's Annie Hayeswood, it's Emily Henry, it's Abby Jimenez. Like, it's like, girlies, I'm picking the creme de la creme of the genre. I'm not deep in the genre. I'm not deep in the culture. So for people who are deep in the culture, like, there's probably, like, things that are so deep in the murder mystery culture that I love because it's like a self-referential in itself, like depreciating or like making fun of the genre or whatever. There's there's probably reasons that people love this because of how deep in the culture they are. And I'm just not, I'm not. And that's fine, that's fine. Um, but it's over. <laughs> we only need to read one more book. We need to read Miss Laden Parts Half Known. I'm probably just gonna go read the whole thing because at this point we're like nine books in the series. This one is linked very much so to the previous book. So you don't want it to be too spoilery and it's only 140 pages. So I'm gonna read this tomorrow. And I'm so excited to make progress in the Wayward Children series. My favourite, one of my favourite series ever. And it's got bloody dinosaurs on it. It's got dinosaurs on it. So I cannot wait to read this. I'll let you know what I thought once I finish this. Hello gorgeous people, how are we all doing? I finished Miss Laid in Parts Half Known by Sean McGuire, the ninth in the Wayward Children series. This one's difficult for me to talk to you about because there's some, you know, further into the series that are self-contained stories I can kind of give you the plot of, like Across the Green Grass Fields, which is a newer one, where it's like someone going into their world and the self-contained story of them going into their world. This is not that. This is very much a continuation of the previous book where we met Antsy and she went to this world that is kind of portals for all the other worlds and this is very much a continuation of that and I think that's my problem with it and I think this is the first I'm not giving a five star in a long time in the series. Can you go get the Pinot Grigio? She needs a glass, let's go. Pinot Just Grigio. I'm giving this a four. It's the weakest in the series for me for a little while. Obviously I still love it. I still love the tone with which it's written, the magic that Sean O'Guire brings to it, the cast of characters, like this has a lot of our favorite characters like Cade or Sumi. You know, we're getting to spend time with them again, but I remember when I read the previous book to this, I remember saying, I'm giving it five stars, I think it's very powerful, but it does feel like half of a book, you know? It does feel, Auntie's story feels a little bit unfinished. This is very much a continuation of that, and this feels like a quarter of a book, almost. Like, it, the, the kind of resolution that Auntie finds in this book feels like it could have been just another 40 pages on the end of the other book, rather than its whole own book. It feels a little bit lost and meandering and like, like it doesn't really have a purpose. I don't know. It reminds me a lot of Beneath the Sugar Sky, which is probably one of the weaker, other weaker books in the series where there's a quest. I feel like the, these quest books where they go into other worlds just don't work as well for me. <laughs> I don't know. There's something about the hopping between worlds that like, it's the whole story versus there being a story at the core. If you don't know with this series, the odd books are set at Ella West's School for Railroad Children or Home for Railroad Children, whatever it's called. And then the even books are like someone in their portal world. And for me, the school books work when they're like at the school or a school setting. There was an example with Where the Drown Girls Go, um, a couple books ago in the series where there was an introduction to the other school, the alternative school to Ellen the Wests and how they practiced. And I thought that was a great addition. Whereas these school books where they end up just jumping between worlds don't work as well for me. I like them being set 
in the real world, if you can call it that, versus the jumping between worlds. So I'm giving this a four. You know, it's hard for me to talk about because I don't want to spoil anything, particularly for Ansi's storyline in the previous one. But yeah, it just feels like not enough of a book. It feels like there's not enough in this to justify there being a book. I like some of the storylines we got with certain characters. It's very interesting seeing where Sean Maguire is leading for the series to maybe end. I don't know how many books she's planning on doing. I've seen that the synopsis for number 10 is out already. That's like another standalone in the world book. But it's interesting seeing how certain characters' storylines are starting to be wrapped up, particularly Cade or Eleanor West. I think she said that Cade will be the last book. Um, and so it's just very interesting as a fan of the, of the series. But yeah, this one just did not work for me as much as others in the series. I'd be interested to know your thoughts if you have read this one as well. But most importantly, we have completed finger thoughts. So shall we go input it in a tracker? Then I need to go input it in the um, actual spreadsheet, but I'll do that after I do the video. So let's put mislaid in parts half nine by Seanan Maguire. And that is continue a series. Yay! <laughs> I got double bingo! <laughs> I'm now gonna go, after I film this, go put all my data into the main bingathon spreadsheet so we can have everyone's data together. Um, but yeah, I've had so much fun doing this readathon with my patrons and it's been an absolutely amazing creation by some of my patrons. And I'm so happy I got double bingo! That's so much fun! Anyways, I love you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought of any of the books. I doubt many of you have read Unhinged. Thank the Lord. Praise Jesus. <laughs> you have not read on it. But uh, let me know what you thought of any other books I read in this video and I'll see you very soon. Oh, the next vlog is a really good one. The next vlog is a really fun one. So I'll see you soon in another vlog. Bye!